What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Kakis and today we are going to be showcasing the ultimate guide for the Grasp of Avarice dungeon. Talking about not only the base mechanics and encounters but also going over the changes to the master difficulty version which is really important because it's rewarding the unbelievably powerful artifice armor. We also have the location of all of the different collectibles you need for an exotic ornament for your Galahorn and all of the different hidden chest locations, both the ones that award loot and the ones needed for the Galahorn catalyst. Guys, there's so much in this video, but it's going to do terribly. I'm just being honest with you guys. It's a little late. People have spammed out videos for all the individual things. So if you guys enjoy this video, if you like having everything in one place, please remember to support it, share it, send it to a friend. It really does help and hopefully we can get that information out there. So starting things off, you're going to start off the dungeon on this outside area here. Nothing is really here of note, but it is going to introduce you to that base dungeon mechanic. When you kill certain enemies, they're going to drop exotic engrams. These engrams will slowly become more and more red and eventually blow up so you can't collect them anymore. But when you do, you get the Burdened by Riches debuff and it lasts for 30 seconds. If you were to just wait for all 30 seconds, you will actually die. But as you collect more and more of these engrams, you're going to get Burdened riches times two times three times four it goes up pretty darn high something extremely important to know is when you get to burned by riches times 10 you instantly regenerate all of your abilities so you get a free super so make sure with that knowledge that you're utilizing your super your abilities just before you grab your 10th uh, engram and that is going to be really important especially for overcoming the master difficulty in any event, once you collect a bunch of these engrams, get burned by riches, you can head inside to this white crystal where you deposit this debuff essentially and you'll see it slowly go down by standing beside it. After you've done this enough, the crystal is going to activate and let you into the dungeon. Now, very soon after dropping down here, the first collectible is just going to be off to your left. After you grab that, you're going to go forward and you're going to see a big open area here. This is where we're actually going to find our first hidden chest specifically for the Galahorn Catalyst. But as you can see, it requires you to be burdened by riches. So if you look nearby, you're going to see a Reaver Vandal and this guy is going to drop the different engrams when he's wounded. So as you damage him, collect one of the engrams and simply book it back to this chest to open it up and activate it. So you're not going to get really any sort of rewards, but you're seeing the bottom part of your screen, you recovered looted fragments, which means things are going well. But right after you're done that, after you cross the giant crystalline bridge, look to your left and you'll find another message in the bottle, aka another collectible. Moving on from there, once you enter the rusted gangplank area, you're going to encounter your first of many booby traps. So essentially, you can activate these buttons near the doors to open them, but there's a pressure plate inside. If you touch the pressure plate, spikes will come out and kill you. So you need to avoid it, jump over it, whatever, and activate the secondary button inside the leftmost door to continue. However, while you're inside here, look up and you're actually going to see a vent you can jump up to and in here there's yet another collectible. Moving on from there, you're also going to encounter your first trap doors. If you stand here for too long, they will fall down and you will fall to your death if you don't jump right away. But underneath these trap doors, you're going to find another activatable button. This one, as you can see, controls the grid and opens up the doors that if you double back, you can see were above you in that initial area. You want to head to the furthest back right one and activate the pressure plate actually to open the door above and then you can head through. But before you jump up and continue going forward, you actually want to double back a little bit, kind of right above where you first came out. As you can see, there is kind of a little back passage and in here is another collectible. Moving on, you have this encounter here where you have to squeeze your way through these different doorways and inside there's different activatable buttons that are going to close 
open doorways and open currently closed doorways. So essentially you alternate the different doors in order to jump from one to the next and slowly move your way across this arena. Eventually when you get to the back left hand door, that's actually quite important because Inside here, there's another kind of passageway above you and you can jump up here and activate a different button that controls the two end doors that have been currently closed. And then you're gonna have to travel to the one that gets open, kill the enemies, activate the button in there, which activates the opposite one so you can keep going forward. But in this room, as you can see, you can jump up to this other passageway and find another collectible. Now after you do that and quite a bit more jumping, you're going to continue forward through this dungeon. Make sure to open the door on the right, the door on the left will kill you, and then you're going to get into this new area. Same kind of thing, you activate the different buttons, and each time you do, as you can see, it's going to open up a different door corresponding with these numbered areas of this arena. However, while you're here, there is a secret loot chest. So. From area number four, right next to the generator, as you can see, if you turn to your right, you can jump up on this tiny little ledge and here is a chest. And this chest will give you dungeon loot. After you've grabbed that, simply make your way around this arena, going to each different location that's been opened by the buttons, activate the next button, go to the next location, activate the next button, and keep doing that until eventually you're going to kill a fallen enemy that drops a scorch cannon. With this Scorch Cannon, what you can actually do is go to the generator at section four and shoot the Scorch Cannon into the opening. That's actually going to activate the door. As you can see though, if you don't hold down the Scorch Cannon, you just shoot it normally, the door doesn't go up long enough. Sometimes to activate these, you have to shoot and then hold and you'll see the explosion grow stronger and stronger. And at the third tier of that strength, you then let go for the maximum damage and that's gonna be enough to fully open this door. Once the door opens, watch out for a giant cylinder that tries to Indiana Jones squish you and then just make your way forward. Not too long after that hallway, however, you're going to encounter another Reaver Vandal, which means that there is the Gallahorn Catalyst chest nearby. So hurt this guy, make sure you grab the Burdened Bonus, and then continue going forward up this vent here. You're going to eventually come into this wide open area right here, and to your immediate right, that is where there's going to be a little ledge with the chest you open to again get those looted fragments. Now we did that first because it's time sensitive because of the burden, but you actually want to double back to this initial area because there's actually a collectible located here. So after going through this door and hopefully avoiding the pressure plate, you're going to make your way forward and underneath this kind of plank, there is a secret passageway and in here there is the collectible. Then you're gonna continue your way forward, go back to that uh, area where the Gallahorn Catalyst chest was and jump across to the end. Once you get there, you're going to find an area where you can put a rally flag, probably a good idea to do so because you're gonna have your first boss fight. And for this boss fight, the base mechanics are what you've already done. So you're gonna have to kill the fallen enemies near the very front of the arena to drop a Scorch Cannon. Use the Scorch Cannon to shoot the generators that you can see on the top left and top right of this arena, and that's gonna open the doors which spawn a bunch of Hive. In here, when you kill the Hive, they're gonna drop those exotic engrams that you can get for Burdened uh, by Riches. Once you have this debuff, run to the center white crystal and stand near here long enough to get rid of your debuff and also charge the crystal up. So usually it's after killing everyone on the right, uh, you head over to the left or vice versa, and once you've done both sides and deposited all of your burden stacks, that will be enough to make the crystal glow, and then the ogre is gonna walk next to it, and you'll see a prompt in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, and then you can damage this ogre, as you can see, so get inside a well, utilize stuff like 1K voices, sleeper, whatever with particle, use the Galahorn, doesn't really matter, whatever it takes to deal the most damage, and eventually you're either going to kill the ogre or you're gonna have to do a new phase where you're gonna have to do those mechanics over again. Now for master difficulty, it's actually the same exact thing, but with one main change. You actually are gonna have champions within the master difficulty. But really importantly, a huge tip here guys, there's no locked loadouts in master. 
So make sure you just switch your primary to whatever the actual champion you're going to encounter in that part of the dungeon is, right? There's no point in running an overload bow if you don't have an overload champion to deal with. So in this first encounter, it is going to be hive barrier champions. So if you are running linear fusion rifles, for example, with particle deconstruction, the Arbalest exotic linear fusion is a great choice here. It actually just got a buff where it has intrinsic anti-barrier rounds. So again, that's going to be used to deal with those hive champions that spawn when you're collecting the engrams. Now, some other things to note. Firstly, the boss on master hits incredibly hard. So putting on a void damage resist is a really good idea. And lastly, there's going to be a lot more health that this boss has on master. So you're probably not going to be able to two phase him, but when he gets down to his last third of health, he starts moving around the map and like coming up the ramps to you. So you really want to make sure you actually DPS him at least when he's starting to get low from this balcony here. So he's not going to come up here because when he walks right up to your well and starts slamming the ground, things are likely going to go bad pretty quickly. But after you have dispatched with this boss, you're going to continue forward and you're going to find another collectible in the very first room after this boss arena. As you can see, it's located inside the cylinder that you can jump through the top of. Now, continuing on from there, we have the Sparrow Encounter. So for this, you're going to have to go and dismantle the mines kind of while on your Sparrow, and you have an extremely limited amount of time to do so. So what you need to do is drive by these fallen devices, and as you can see, they have lights that are going to turn from red to green as you drive by, and when you activate them, they're going to add more time to the mine you have to dismantle. So if you just ignore those, you're probably not going to be able to get there and dismantle it in time. Now for the master difficulty, you have to do the same thing, but enemies are going to hit a lot harder. It's a very good idea to put on some arc damage resists if you can, because all the dregs in this encounter are shooting arc damage at you. And also, as soon as you see any sort of like fire or smoke on your sparrow, just get off it and summon a new one really quickly and keep going. Additionally, there's a lot of ads near these mines, so it's not a bad idea to get off your sparrow, like kill the ads for just a few seconds, throw a grenade, you know, shoot a rocket launcher, something to deal with them, and then get back on your sparrow, because if you try to capture the whole thing on your sparrow, your sparrow blows up pretty darn fast. But moving on from there, once you do complete this, we do have some more interesting stuff that's going to be located near this giant skull that comprises the end of this sparrow section. So as you can see right here, off to the left side of the skull, if you're facing it down here, there's a hidden ledge with yet another collectible, as you can see. Now, once you grab it, head back up because there's actually a hidden chest that's gonna be located in the right eye of the skull if you were looking directly at it. So you're gonna to have to jump up these crystals right here, as you can see, head towards that eye, and here is the chest. Again, it's another dungeon loot chest. Now, after you've grabbed that, head to the giant crystalline cave. Normally, you jump down to continue forward, but this time, you actually want to jump upwards, scale the different crystals, until eventually, you're going to find another collectible located right here. And then, grab that and drop down to continue to the next encounter. And that's going to be the Fallen Shield encounter. So for this, you have the same Scorch Cannon and Fallen Generator mechanic that you're used to. This time, when you activate a generator, it's going to turn on this Man Cannon. So you can activate this Man Cannon two different ways. You can shoot and hold, and then that's going to give you time to get a good angle on the generator, go and stand ready to be shot, and then you let go, which shoots you through the Man Cannon, or you can just shoot it with a direct impact. Uh, you don't have to hold it. A direct impact is good enough to propel you through the man cannon. Uh, the key here, we found it pretty inconsistent at first, but don't jump. Like just stand there on the ground and we got the best results for the man cannon actually flinging you the right distance with that. So what you're actually gonna wanna do is when you first start this encounter, try to look around for the platform that has a servitor with an invincibility shield on it. And if you can spot it, that is where you wanna head first. 
you can technically head wherever. There isn't a designated way you have to go. You don't have to start going to the left or to the right. You simply use the man cannons to make your way to that first servitor. Because when you get to an area with a servitor, what you have to do is kill all the fallen in that area. They are gonna drop uh, those engrams and then you take those engrams and deposit them at the white crystal in the very center of these platforms. And once you've deposited enough, What's going to happen is that the invincibility shield of the servitor is going to go down. You kill the servitor, and as you can see, you actually have an objective marker on the corpse of the servitor. So you actually need to manually move that into position on the man cannon. As you can see, make sure the man cannon is pointed at the very center of the arena, and you're going to shoot this dead servitor at the giant object and it's going to hit these different devices that are going to lower the health of the giant fallen shield preventing you from progressing. So you're gonna have to do this four separate times. Shoot the four separate kind of devices on this giant shield generator. Now, as for the master difficulty, you are going to find overload champions that spawn with the fallen. So what we found was super effective for this is just overload swords thanks to the seasonal mod. This was amazing because you are fighting pretty close quarters in these areas anyway, so a sword is great for just taking out all the adds. And then of course, when you do see a champion, you can smack it a few times, that's going to trigger it and stun it so you can finish it off with a sword pretty darn fast. All right, so that's how you beat the encounter, but there is going to be a collectible in this area that's located two different platforms to your left from the starting area, as you can see. So you can head down here, and once you do get there, you want to jump on the building, like the tallest building that's in the very center of this platform, and then you wanna jump up to this kind of fallen like generator or turbine that's hanging in the air. Once you can get up here, as you can see, there's a collectible inside. But from there, you want to beat the encounter because you do need access to the center platform that only becomes available when you lower the shield. So once you get here, the first thing you need to do is actually head off kind of to the left if you're facing the starting area, because as you can see, a Scorch Vandal has spawned that yet again, you're going to need to wound to collect your burden, and then you're going to need to run back and shoot yourself with the man cannon back to that center platform as quickly as possible, scale the largest building there, and kind of on the second rooftop, as you can see, there is the final chest that you need for the Galahorn Catalyst. Now, right after that, actually head under that very same building where you're going to find yet another collectible. From here, guys, you're gonna shoot yourself directly upwards and continue forward with this dungeon. Now, there is going to be one last collectible located in this arena, but you only gain access to it after you beat the encounter. So let's talk about this encounter. First and foremost, there's going to be the big boss in the middle and two mini bosses. However, the shank certainly feels like a full boss, especially in the master difficulty. Now, if you are going for speed, you can technically ignore these guys, but especially on hard mode, and what I would recommend is taking out at least the Shank because he snipes you from across the map, and probably the Marauder too. It's just gonna make things easier if you take those guys out and then complete the rest of the mechanics. Now, speaking of the rest of the mechanics, here's what happens. Eventually, you're going to, after killing a few guys and clearing out uh, the three different zones within this arena, so there's gonna be one zone kind of in the middle at the base of where the boss is, and then there's one to the left and one to the right. Now, you're going to eventually have a fallen guy spawn with a Scorch Cannon, and this Scorch Cannon is, yet again, gonna be used to activate the generators. There's gonna be one generator on kind of the either side of this very middle platform, and when you hit them, you are gonna have to hold down, and when it gets to the highest level of explosion, let it go, and then as you can see, it opens up all these devices, and loot literally spews out in those three different locations. So in the three different areas that enemies, especially like groups of dregs and stuff, are spawning, that's where the loot is going to spew out. So you're going to want to have one teammate kind of covering each one of these three areas to grab all of those engrams. Very importantly, guys, exactly 
10 engrams spew out. So you remember what we said at the very beginning of the video, when you get to the burdened times 10, then you instantly get all of your abilities back. So it's a good, really good idea to use your super to clear out those ads, like pop a well, slay out, do whatever, because when you get all those engrams, you're gonna get your super back instantly. And that is a huge tip, especially for master difficulty. But once you do grab those engrams, make your way to the middle of the arena. Very good idea if you can use a defensive super here, uh, such as a well or a bubble while you're depositing on this crystal, because if you're killed while you're depositing, let's say you're halfway through, you still have five times burdened left, you lose those five. So you're gonna have to do like a whole nother phase to make up for that. So again, use a protective super, it's a very good idea. But after depositing 60 stacks into the crystal, so two waves into the crystal, then the boss is going to teleport to kind of center stage. So you can either DPS him from this initial crystal, certainly on normal mode, that's gonna be easiest, but on master difficulty, you can use an alternative spot. As you can see, you can kind of go behind him. He can still shoot you from here, but there's kind of a big object that you can simply move around to the left to start avoiding his fire if you need it. And importantly, while you're here, if you have left, uh, for example, the Marauder alive, that guy can't also be damaging you when you're DPSing. It's just you and the boss. So again, that might be a bit easier. And yet again, you're either gonna one phase him or you're gonna have to do everything you did over again, charge the crystal again to get to another damage phase and potentially a third time if you're doing master. Now, the only other thing that's gonna happen for master difficulty that you need to be aware of is in this encounter, there are gonna be barrier servitors. So the Arbalist is yet again fantastic because it's also gonna be great at DPSing uh, the main boss, especially in combination with particle deconstruction. However, we did find that linear fusions are pretty crap against the shank. Like that shank is going to be an issue. So you're going to have to deal with it one way or another. But again, uh, those servitors are going to spawn at the very start of kind of the encounter. So once you deal with them, they will not spawn again until you've gone through a damage phase. So if you do have to get to the second damage phase, they will spawn again and then you kill them and then you're good to go. So probably a good idea to just deal with those guys first and foremost and then do all the other mechanics and ad clearing and so on. But guys, once you do finally kill this boss, there's kind of a pod behind him that's gonna open up and expose the original greedy guardian that set all this up. And also inside, as you can see, is the final collectible. So once you grab this, you're gonna be able to go into your triumphs, as you can see, and simply click on the richest dead mine alive triumph that will unlock this brand new exotic ornament, as you can see. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content so much this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is also linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.